Good morning. It's uh, Deborah V. Wilson. Uh, again, just outside of Janesville, Wisconsin. Um, it is um, the 18th of August, Thursday. The time is 10 hundred hours and 41 minutes, and that's GMT minus six. I was just exchanging a wee bit of a chat on Facebook with a Facebook friend, very little chat, about international travels through Europe. And uh, the bulk of my international travels uh, I have been in uh, Europe. Um, and it brought back such fond memories and the memories of, uh, of how you move through this world or how you place yourself in the world and how you define your citizenship be it to the country of your birth or the country in which you now reside and how you define or if you define your global citizenship. Um, for me, no matter where you are, you fully participate in the greater good. Um, I come from a family in which participation is uh, not only important but an obligation. And it's not just an obligation of being an American, it's an obligation because I'm African-American. And literally, uh, I come from parents who, uh, my mother witnessed someone being lynched who attempted to vote, a man, uh, an African-American man. She saw him hung from a tree. And my father uh, constantly heard stories of uh, white extremists white American extremists preventing African Americans from voting. Uh, so I've never taken lightly my responsibility as a citizen. Um, I know I'm literally one generation away from people who were denied basic, what we, as we now know, uh, are basic human rights. Uh, I watch in horror and uh, dismay as I see uh, Americans who are Muslim and African Americans who have continually uh, experienced uh, questioning of their humanity via the um, denial of basic human rights. Um, but back to this, uh, the topic of this podcast, um, I, um, I, I, I look back fondly and of, of my travels to Europe and I look forward to returning to the continent. I look forward to exploring other parts of the world. Uh, in, my, I, in my view, uh, line of vision uh, is uh, Israel uh, and other parts of the Middle East. Uh, but um, when it comes to Europe, um, I would have to focus on one city in particular, and that would be London, England. Uh, London, I, England, I traveled over a Span of almost three decades, and whilst I was there, I did a tremendous amount of volunteer work. Uh, London, England made it very easy um, at that particular time to do volunteer work. Uh, most of the uh, organizations I belonged to, they had uh, either no membership cost or flexible membership cost. They uh, offered a great deal of flexibility in terms of your ability to participate, and if your ability to participate uh, was to sit there and bear witness to what was being said and discussed, you were respected and valued as a member. Uh, I found the environments very inclusive. I know others didn't, and that would, that would bear, um, was borne out by the fact that typically at that time I was, uh, and we're talking over almost 30 years ago. So uh, I was typically in the organizations I belonged to the only uh, woman of color. They were feminist organizations and all women. And they were, uh, I was typically the only woman of color or one of two women of color. Uh, it, nevertheless, within the organizations I found um, in, uh, a tolerance and inclusion. Um, I also found uh, England at that time to and, um, be very, uh, London, England, to be amazingly welcoming to intellectual curiosity 
Um, I often, often visited uh, Parliament and sat in on committee meetings and every blue moon participated as uh, a, a, the public. Um, I also had the wonderful opportunity of doing myriads of research on various challenges to the United Kingdom. And during that research, it was not uncommon for me to reach out to elected officials in London, England. But I would have to say what is so amazing is I reached out to them and they responded and helped direct me um, and facilitate uh, my path to uh, garnering a greater understanding of Britain and how the country works. Uh, in addition to that, um, I've never been a student at LSE or SOAS, School of Oriental and African Study, both uh, in LSE, London School of e Economics, both in uh, London, England. But over the years, I cannot count the number of academics that I've reached out to for assistance with my research. Uh, fully identifying that I was not a student and at that particular time had no plan on being a future student and there was no promise of, 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 of a donation to the university, there was no promise of anything. They always helped. They always directed me. They suggested lectures for me to attend. LSE has always had a myriad of free lectures open to the public that introduced you to the world, uh, to leaders of the world, to major uh, political policy, political and policy um, influencers in the world. Um, it, I found it incredibly easy to be a global citizen in London, England. I found it incredibly easy to participate. Uh, I'm looking at the timer on this uh, podcast and it's under 10 minutes. Uh, I could literally talk for the next 10 days and would not cover all of the ways in which the city of London made herself available to me, a foreign national, to learn, to understand, to explore. The libraries who granted me uh, library cards when I didn't quite have the appropriate identification, but I needed a place to study and to write up my findings. The University of Westminster, the computer lab, decades ago, when I was doing volunteer work at a feminist organization that needed office supplies, the university had a, had a habit of uh, discarding partially used office supplies. When I saw them, um, I asked the gentleman who oversaw, the student, graduate student who oversaw the computer lab if I could have them, and when he asked why and I explained, he helped me box them up and going forward would set them aside. That's over 20 years ago. He would set aside uh, anything that they were going to throw away. He'd make sure he set it aside so I could have first dibs to look at it for the organization. He also allowed me to use the computer lab at the University of Westminster when I wasn't a student. Um, and in Ireland, I lived in Ireland for a while Blessington um, County Dublin and, and Dundalk um, County Loud. Um, and when I lived in Dublin, uh, I've never stopped my feminist research no matter where I'm at. Um, that would be two decades ago, approximately two decades ago. And when I lived there, I didn't uh, have a computer. And, but I, my handwriting is uh, bad at best and I needed to have a place to type up my um, findings. I reached out to UCD and told them, uh, the university told the uh, computer lab uh, who I was, uh, a, an American national simply uh, living in uh, Ireland, learning this country, trying to understand. And uh, for over a year, the then uh, um, computer, uh, the director of the computer department allowed me at no charge to use the uh, UCD computer lab on a regular basis as a guest. 
Um, it helped facilitate, um, it helped ground me in the country, and in addition to that, it helped me to continue my activism. And in turn, I made sure that when I was working as a feminist in Dublin, I always gave credit to UCD and others who provided a places and spaces so that I could position myself and occupy a, the space in the world in which I wanted to. Um, I, I think uh, for those of us who had the privilege to do leisure travel, it can be described as no better, no, it's best described as a privilege. It's a privilege that I still get emotional about. It's a privilege I don't take for granted. It's a privilege that I don't, that I don't think comes without obligations. And for me, that obligation is how you engage and how you experience your citizenship and your global citizenship. Uh, when you go through a country, if you do it particularly repeated, repeatedly, as I've done in England, and as I've done in the Republic of Ireland, um, and as I've done in the north of Ireland, you leave a good imprint. You do your best. And if your best is no more than to be a responsible traveler and respect the rules, or if your best is to do other things, if your best is to volunteer, you do your best. You give your service, you give the best of yourself. This is a bit scattered podcast, but um, I'm looking forward, and in that looking forward, I'm returning to my travels to London, England, and shortly to Israel. Not sure about the capacity I'll be in Israel. Might be as a tourist, might be in other ways. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to know that soon. In any case, I'm, I'm looking forward to my upcoming travels to Haifa. And, and learning about the feminist uh, expressions of feminism there uh, but from women of all stripes. And I'm looking forward to returning to my space in London, England. This is Deborah B. Wilson. It's the 18th of August, 2016, and I'm just outside of Janesville, Wisconsin, GMT minus six. Thank you.